All right, so we're going to continue on creating the lighting and really kind of create the illusion of this image hanging on a wall with some shadows casting and some really harsh lighting effects. So first thing I need to do is create a new layer, and I'm going to fill that layer with a neutral gray, pressing Shift-Delete, use 50% gray, OK, there we go. Go under Filter, and we're going to go to Render to Lighting Effects. Now, inside this window, all I really want to do is manipulate the directional handles here. And I want to position them so it appears as though the light that, I'm, that, this, that this is going to render is coming from this light inside my layout. So I'm just going to kind of maneuver this until it's in a position that's relative to where that light is positioned. And I'm not going to worry too much if it's not perfect because I can change it if I don't get it right. And I'm going to hit OK. And actually, that looks pretty good. Hmm, got pretty lucky that time. <laughs> and all I need to do now on this particular layer is change it to a soft light blending mode. It's like that. So you can see right away we're starting to get some interesting uh, depth with the lighting. we still got a ways to go. So I'm going to create a new layer on top of that one and go over here and get my elliptical marquee tool. And I'm just going to draw just a broad elliptical mar uh, selection here right beneath the light. And I'm going to go over here and get my eyedropper tool and sample the, the glow inside this light here because it's got kind of a yellow tint to it. And I'm just going to do Option Delete Fill that selection on that empty layer with that color. Deselect. And I'm going to go under Filter and give this a really harsh blur. Go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we're going to go up really big, possibly about 25 pixels. And that looks pretty good. Hit OK and change this layer's blending mode to Overlay. Now it looks really harsh, and we're going to fix that by a layer mask. So I'm just going to create a new layer mask on this, get my gradient tool, making sure we're going from a black to transparent gradient. Start at the very bottom, holding down that Shift key, dragging all the way, almost right above the light here, just a little ways above it. And there we have that. So it made that effect really, really subtle, almost as if it disappeared altogether, but it did not. If I turn that layer off, you can see that it has intensified the light that's directly beneath the light, right on the frame here. So it's really given me a more convincing area of light here, as if it's sitting right beneath it. So that works pretty good there. Now, what I need to do now is go ahead and start generating the shadows that are being cast by this frame based on the light. Now. First thing I need to do, I'm going to go in here and select the frame file. Now, if I activate the frame layer as a selection, if I hold down my command key and click it, you can see it's going to generate a selection of only the frame because this inside area is transparent. Well, I want a selection of the entire area. So I'm simply going to grab my magic wand tool, and on that frame layer, click outside the frame area here, making sure contiguous is checked, otherwise it would still select that inside empty area. So with that outside area selected, simply invert the selection by pressing Shift-Command-I. And then, I'm going to hold down my Command key as I click the New Layer icon, and that will place a new layer directly beneath that frame layer. And with that active, bring up my, I'm going to activate my default colors here, bringing black to the foreground. Just hit, press Option-Delete, and that will fill that layer with black, as you can see right there in the layer palette. Can't see it because it's sitting behind the frame in the photo, but it, there it is. I'm actually going to duplicate this layer a couple times because, nope, I accidentally got styles there. Don't need that. I'm going to duplicate this a couple times because we have a number of different light sources inside this air, this image here. We've got light that's being cast from this light here. We've got ambient light in the entire room, and it's all going to ha behave differently on how it hits this frame and how it casts the shadows. So this first layer, I'm going to go down and select that. I'm going to bring up my free transform, pressing Command T. And I'm simply just going to drag from the bottom, drag this thing down just a little ways, about like that. And I'm going to hold down my Control key, bring up this little pull-down menu, go to Perspective, and I'll hold down the Option key and just drag out those edges there. Actually, I don't need to hold down my Option key. It's just out of habit. <laughs> Drag it out just a little bit like that, and then press Enter. Then I'm going to give this a slight blur. Go under ga Blur, Gaussian Blur. Not quite the 25 we used before. I don't need it that harsh. 
give it about a 3, and then hit OK, and drop the opacity down quite a bit, right around 40, perhaps. And of course, I can change this after the fact. Now I'm going to select that next layer that's going to be a shadow, and I'm going to cast this one kind of down into the side a little bit. So I'm going to bring up my free transform, control, distort, and I'm just going to drag this middle down and over just a hair. Just about like that. I can actually hold, press my control key to get a little bit more constrained movement there, or a little bit freer movement in a, in a small area. I go outside the area of that other one a little bit, and then press Enter. Then I'm going to give that one a blur, as I did before, and drop that opacity down again quite a bit. Actually push that over just a little bit and down. Bring that opacity down even more. So there's that. So next, I'm going to go ahead and select that last one, and I'm all going to do. All I'm going to do to this one is just give this a blur, and then use my arrow keys to simply drop it down a little bit into a little offset there and drop its opacity down, not quite as much as the others, but just a little bit. And that will be basically the immediate shadow, that, because it's right up against the wall, this is the immediate shadow being cast by it. So we're getting several different shadows cast by all different types of light sources in this image. And of course I can go in here and tweak these as I needed, if I need to give them a little bit more of a blur. And actually for this one I might go and generate a layer mask, and with a gradient give it a slight not quite that much. Just give it a slight little bit of transparency in some areas, just because it has so it has a little variance in there. Now, I'm almost done. It's almost selling the entire effect, except in the frame. The frame is not quite convincing in this setting. So what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to zoom in so we can actually see what's going on here. I'm going to select that frame layer, and I'm going to activate it as a selection by pressing Command and clicking on the layer icon there. I'm going to copy that frame to the clipboard, go under Edit to Copy, and we're going to go to my Channels palette over here. I'm going to create a new alpha channel, and that, active, that selection is still active. I'm going to go under Edit, Paste. And that's going to paste that frame into an alpha channel, and it does so in a grayscale way. It's a grayscale file now inside that alpha channel. So I'm going to deselect that. Actually, no, I don't want to deselect. I want to go back to my layers, and above... I'm going to create a new layer above that, fr that original frame layer. We're going to fill that selection with a neutral 50% gray, just like this. And what we're going to do is go under Filter to Render Lighting Effects once again. And we're going to do something a little different this time. We're going to leave the lighting direction as it is, as we said and when we used it previously. But what we're going to do differently is go under, way down here at the bottom you see Texture Channel. And we're going to go down here, and it goes off screen, but you can't see it, but it is the Alpha 1 channel, which is that channel we just created and pasted that texture in. So I'm going to select that, and you can see that that texture is showing up inside the document here. So with that selected, I'm going to hit OK, and you can see it's applied that effect that to that texture and using that light source. Now what it's done, because of that texture, it's influencing, basically, how the light is being received onto this uh, frame, the texture on this frame. You can see that the, the, sh the shadow being cast on this side of the frame is influenced by the light direction up here, and it's the same over here. So, simply by changing the blending mode to overlay, you can see that that frame now has a much more convincing depth to it. If I turn this on and off, you can see it's kind of flat there, much more convincing here. Now in some areas it might be a little harsh, all I would simply need to do is drop the opacity a little bit, get it to around there, but you can really see that difference. See that difference right there? It's flat and gives it a little bit more dimension, and it's based on that light source. So if I zoom back out here, you can see, toggle on and off, you can see a huge difference. So there it is. Taking a simple image of a frame and a simple wedding photo, bringing it into Photoshop and generating a whole atmosphere of a wall with lighting and everything just to give it a much more compelling look. So I encourage you to give it a try, and we'll see you next time.